okay, so, okay, so, Dennis, I was going to ask you, what part of, of Santa Monica are you? Well, my, uh, I live in Santa Monica, but my office is here in Culver City. Oh, you're, up, you're right by me. I'm in Inglewood. You're in Ingle. Oh, all right. Yeah, you're just on the other side of the hill behind us. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm closer to Sony Pictures, that area. I, you know, but... I, I'm, on Culver <laughs> Boulevard, I'm on Culver Boulevard all the time. Uh, <laughs> my favorite place is Honey Kettle Chicken. <laughs> all the time. I, love I haven't it. been there yet, and I hear it's very good. Oh, here, okay, here's here's the it's, it's always food related. I, I hate this, but it's always related. So, Dennis, when you go there, get a get a cup of their rice and gravy. The what? It's rice and like rice uh -huh. and gravy. The oh. gravy is the best thing on earth. And it actually <laughs> has their chicken pieces in the gravy. It's, it's a brown gravy. Ooh. I don't know what they do to it. They add crack. I don't know what's in there. But it is so <laughs> delicious. We all love it. It's like great. <laughs> is there only one location? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're not a chain. It's like, there's just, I don't think they're a chain. If they're a chain, I don't know. But I've never seen any other locations. I've only seen them. With that endorsement, location two is probably just right around the corner. Well, Sony's right there. So it's not far from Sony. So, far from Sony. so and I can, I can get delivered. I'm, I'm only in Inglewood, not that far away. I can get delivered. But Clover <laughs> has all those restaurants, like a restaurant row. Yeah. It's a really cool place. They're all good. And, they, and I don't think there are many chains on that restaurant row, except for maybe, uh, what's the salad place that's there that... Oh, yeah, Mixed Greens. Yeah, something Sweet like greens. that. Sweet huh? Greens. Sweet Green. Or Tender Greens. It's tender one of those. Greens. Tender, tender Greens. greens. So they're all chains, but that's what I'll get. <laughs> How many salad chains <laughs> are there? Hmm. <laughs> I like all of them. I like all of like them. But, but you know, Sweet Green is there. It's not on Culver. It's on... Washington. There's another in Culver City. There's a sweet okay. there. There's a there's a cute little patio area with all these like all these trees. That's not far from the uh, the metro station. It's really cute. Nice. Culver City is funny because Culver City has like really nice neighborhoods and <laughs> not so nice. Neighborhoods. Nice. We've been here about uh, I'm gonna say fifteen or sixteen years. So you see you see a change. You see a change. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I wish my office was a bit closer to that downtown area so I could walk there. I could technically walk, but it's a long walk. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you don't, sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes you don't like, want to. Like, why bother, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, with $5 a gallon gas, maybe walking is the smart well, move right now, right? Yeah, exactly. Did you see that I thing mean, they were showing that was someplace in LA was six twenty nine? Oh Oh, no. Like at Beverly Hills or something? I was like, no, no. Because mm -mm. my, my brother-in-law pays five thirty nine for his premium gas. Yeah, I have premium as well. And I started seeing it pop up about $6 here and there. Yeah. Crazy. That's, that's outrageous. That, that's, that's, that's highway robbery. That's crazy. I mean, that's, that's, that's all another story. But it's, we, that's, might have, we might have to go back to horses. But I love horseback riding. Money. I love horseback riding, so let's do it. James let's do it. can ride, okay? I'm just yeah. saying he's got history with horses. How about you, Dennis? Can you ride? I can't. If I, I'm afraid of horses. They're too big. I, I won't even get close to a horse. I mean, I, if there's a, bob, a barbed wire fence between us, then I'll... I'll, I'll oh. What if it's a pygmy horse, a little dwarf little thing? Could you ride one of those? A little pony? Well, those, uh, they don't bother me. They're the size of a dog. But I mean, a horse, it's, they're gigantic. And, you know, you're kind of, people get on that. I remember years ago, I got on a horse and I was terrified. I, I just couldn't move. I don't know. They're just such a big animal. Well, they are a tall, they are a tall animal, because I know. And, and they, have, they do have, they have minds. Um, so you have to kind of like, I always say, just get to know them. Like people, just kind of get to know them first where you get on them and, and make a bond with them, and then they they they'll do whatever you want. That's what I'm told. I'm told yeah. that they're pretty docile, and that you just have to don't show any fear and right, walk right up to one. Yeah, but they say that about bears too. So you know. <laughs> well, I can't talk to speak to bears, but I know what the horses. Well, well, the horses are scared of you. The horses are scared of you most of the time. So it's kind of like that's the whole point. It's like they say, come up, just be friendly and pet them yeah. and. I don't know, I just, I don't, I'm, I'm an equine person, I know, but I love horses. I, I just, I've been right since I was a kid. So are you guys here to ask me about my golf tips today and my <laughs> instruction? So Dennis, Dennis is one of my best golf buddies ever. 
So um, what it, do you have an index now? I, I, no, and, and you know what? She only says that because she beats me all the time. Well, see, here's the thing. You, I know nothing about golf. So you said index. I'm like, wow, well, like, I don't know what that means. Index cards, I know what that means. I have, so literally, it'd be like you speaking another language. I don't know anything about golfing. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I've been working in the insurance industry for all those years. They all did the golfing stuff. I never went. I was like, you guys do golfing. I'll be at the slots or whatever. I don't care. But that's why I just, I'm not, I know, I, golfing is something I could, I could never get into. Not even miniature golf. I mean, it's okay, but I'm not even a miniature golf person. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. I was, I just, miniature I just, golf goes with beer. You know, so usually there's it's a drinking game. Well, but, but, but here's my thing. Here's my thing. Okay, so you guys, maybe you guys can answer this for me. I, I think I asked um, Jeff Lang this once. Our friend Jeff Lang asked this one time. What is it about golf that you guys enjoy? I mean, what is it? Is it is it the art of trying to get these balls in holes, or is there a whole like like is it like a whole like Zen thing that goes? I mean, I'm just I'm just I'm really I don't, I have no. I mean, other sports I kind of get. I played them, I guess, so I get them. But like this one, I just don't, I don't get it. It's yes. a business, it's a business sport. I mean, I, I remember it's, uh, I've always been, I uh, was raised around golf courses. My parents grew up, or we, we grew up in communities with the golf course. Didn't really like it as a young um, kid, but I like the camaraderie, the, the friends you meet, it's a, you can talk. You, BS a little bit here and there. You talk business. You talk about what, just like what we're doing over coffee and smoothies, and but hitting a golf ball. You know, it, it's fun and being outdoors, it's great. I mean, that's the part I like about it. Um, yeah, and then you swear a little bit at that little white ball, and it doesn't it's talk like you're back. Golfing at with it, Dennis. <laughs> it, golfing with Dennis, you swear at the ball, but it doesn't talk back to you. So you just, you know. And it's just like they said when you're, um, what is it, playing darts? You kind of picture someone on the dartboard. Yes. Well, you know, it's the golf ball. You kind of hit that thing and okay. think about someone that you're hitting. <laughs> now you're speaking my language. Now you're speaking my language. I'm, I'm shady as much. So now you're speaking my language. Got it. Okay. Because I play darts. I'm a good, I'm a good dart thrower, and I, I, I'm always picturing somebody. I'm like, that's right, bitch. And I just throw it at them, whatever. It's what happens. Um, that's that's funny. Okay. I know. Well, Melissa, what is it for you? Well, there's no Zen happening on the golf course when I'm there, not at all. Um, and I would echo Dennis's statement. For me personally, I'm competitive and it is it is a com very competitive game. Um, be, and there's two elements, you're competing with yourself. And then depending on what you're doing on the golf course, you could be competing with others, you know. So um, it's a competitive drive. And there's, and Dennis might be able to, you know, echo these same sentiments. There's nothing better than connecting the face of a golf club with that little white ball and oh, just yeah. watching it just, you know, soar hundreds of yards down the fairway straight, exactly where you want it. There's like, there's just this feeling of pure joy and accomplishment <laughs> that comes with a good golf shot. You actually feel the sweet spot on your club hitting the ball at just that. It's like, wow. Yeah. And, and, and it doesn't happen too often, not with me, but many people. Right. So like, that's what keeps you coming back for the next round is that one shot. <laughs> 18 holes, James, that one shot keeps you coming back for more. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of like, I mean, it is... Ugh. Not alike, but I mean, I mean, I guess I can relate it almost a little too much to tennis or bowling, where I, I just, you know, you hit those pins, you, you, you know, you get the ball to do what you want it to do and hit those pins, and or you get the ball on the ball, the tennis ball goes to where you want it to go across the. I mean, I guess I could get that a little bit. I guess it, there is there is satisfaction. Well, it. I think also I brought up business. You know, you you talk about networking, especially in your industry. You meet people. And you just talk about that boring subject you guys are in, insurance. Well, <laughs> or my industry, property management. James, James got out years ago. I left, I left, no I left 13 years insurance. ago. I left oh, years ago. all right. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in entertainment now. So, I mean, I, I, left, I, left, I left that 13 years ago, even yeah. though I'm partially back in it. But I'm, right. I'm, I'm doing the, doing the I, I'm part. the boring one on the call. You're the boring one. <laughs> yeah. James Dennis. <laughs> well, no, I, al I always tease Melissa about, um, you know, it's like 
you know, let's talk about some little, let's talk about insurance. You know, it's like, how exciting is that? <laughs> for me, but I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but but I did watch. This mm -hmm. is Dennis. If I'm starting to talk too long, he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I know I've lost my audience when Dennis starts like, that's okay, <laughs> what else is happening? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay, so with Dennis, we got, we got to tell folks like, what, what industry are you in? Uh, property management. So is that exciting? Um, it was, I mean, it is, I think, I think there's a lot of changes now. If, um, you know, I do enjoy it. I think what's really, um, making it increasingly difficult is the way our technology, you know, it's advancing. So a lot of it's passive. So when you're hearing from clients or tenants, um, they just want to do email or texting and it's very passive because when you're on the phone, they're not going to talk to you the same way, or when you're person to person, not talk to you the same way. So I find email, um, it can be quite annoying in that people want this instant gratification. And oftentimes, you know, lately I've been noticing, I've been getting more, increasingly more emails and about different subjects, but no one's changing the subject line. It's like, they're still talking about, you know, I don't know even how to search um, in my email uh, when residents or, or clients are emailing me and they say, oh, you know, I talked to you about, uh, I don't know, landscaping. And it's like, okay, let me find that email. I can't search on that because they're not changing. They're still on a subject line from eight months ago. It's like, just That's change the subject exactly. line. That's hilarious. True though, that does happen with my clients too. Yeah. I'll agree with Dennis. That does become frustrating in a sense, because I just think it's laziness. If I'm going to call it out, like start a new email <laughs> with a new subject line. Right. Uh, put me in your address book. So I pop up. Yeah. Well, yeah. I try, I try I, because I do, I'm in entertainment. So I'm always booking, I have guests or I'm booking for certain things. I try to do a new email because the longer the email goes, the harder to find information in it. It's yeah. like, yeah, 30 emails in. That one thing you're looking for is like, I just rather have a new email for a new thing that we can just kind of move on. So I kind of agree with you guys on that. I kind of just keep it to keep it fresh and easier to find stuff. Oh, I'm actually, in my trade, so I can't help that also. It, it pops up, especially because in the New York Times this past weekend, they talked about email etiquette and, you know, try to be concise, change your subject lines, do, um, be, uh, when it's business, especially be, uh, get on the point. You can have a little small talk about, hey, hope you're well, hope the family's good. But then get to the point because email is meant to just like a shortcut to that phone call. And then, you know, you don't need to respond right away. You know, uh, the New York Times suggests five days, you know, that's, don't expect a, a reply immediately. Wait a minute, so, wait a minute. Five days. Five days. I mean, really, we're really both on like five. So, okay. Yeah. I have, a, I have a problem with, not with you, you're just reading something. I have a problem with that. I'm like, does I have a problem with you. No, it says I have a problem <laughs> with that only because I give up to two days usually if it's an email that I need to know something, if it's time sensitive. I do a lot of yeah. book. So for me, it's like, but I'm learning, Dennis. That's funny, I'm learning this. Everyone has different email etiquette themselves. And so I'm, you know, for me, I check emails all day long. That's what I do for a living. I do that way. But I notice that some folks they only check at night or they only check in the morning. So I'm learning kind of how to adjust my thinking slightly and go, okay, well, they only answered in a day or so. Maybe they'll answer tonight. I wake up the next morning, it'll be there. Like I try to give people like a little leeway, uh, some people. But I've noticed everybody's email checking is all over the place. I have friends who are right away. They're on it. They're just on their phone. They're on it. But other folks, I'm like, okay, it's been four days. See, that would bug, five days would bug the S out of me. It would just bug, I'll be, I'd, I'd, you're fired, I'm done, I would just be done. I mean, I don't, you know, I'd have an attitude. That to me, it's just, that's just, to me, that's so, that's rude, too long. Well, it really depends. I mean, people complain, like I emailed you three days ago and I'm like, uh-huh, Friday, 10 p.m. 
Yeah. I mean, why do I need to work Saturday and Sunday if oh, those are my closing days? Okay. Well, weekend and, and at, at 10 p.m. So I need, you know, actually, I, I am going to take on a new project here. I'm going to have auto replies now set for certain times of the, you know, an auto reply. We're closed. You know, we'll get to you as soon as we, you know, when we reopen on Monday or. Um, you know, and a lot of times people in my industry, and I, and I think it's industry sensitive, you know, maybe in your sure. industry, you need something immediate, you know, I, I have people that will tell me their garbage disposal, I don't know, is not working. And then, I don't know, somehow they manage to throw in the baby might suffer from this. And it's like, the baby? <laughs> <laughs> so the baby it's might like, suffer. <laughs> I'm, I, I mean, I'm exaggerating that. I know, right? I, mean, do, I, I can't tell them how often I hear about the baby. It's like, oh, they have a baby. Great, you know. It's but and to make it a baby, and it's like, okay, the baby doesn't have anything to take them to the doctor. I don't know. <laughs> it's true, though. I, I, I have so yeah. many of those. Or, or you know, now they treat. Uh, I have. Uh, people that will treat email like text messaging. They'll, they're not like this is spot on about, um, they're not getting to the point and you answer their question, well, what about that? It's like, okay, well, what about this? And you, you know, it's like text messaging and then they add, I don't know, uh, uh, an attachment and now it turns into Twitter or they add a video, it's TikTok. You know, you're just kind of like, okay, this is not what email's about. <laughs> Tell me what you need. Get to the point. But it's true. So I, I, I'm, I'm, ch I'm chortling, not at you, with you. I'm, 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 I've had some situations come. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm chuckling over here. I, 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 I know some of the situations. So yes, I, I, yes. I'm, but I think it is industry specific. I mean, uh, Melissa's business. I mean, you know, she's pretty good. Where hey, this is not. Uh, on her phone messages, I don't know, probably email as well, doesn't um, enter her into any liabilities or contracts just because you mentioned something on the email. And I need to do the same thing. I, I'm gonna probably put it in my byline, some of these tips that um, the New York Times, seriously, like give me some time, you know, don't, I have people pinging me on the weekends on a text and it's like, it's Sunday. Don't ping me that. Oh, I know. I was okay. Let me let me um, amend one of my statements. I when it comes <laughs> to the weekend, those though to me it's just different. Like, seriously, when it comes to the weekend, it's different. Unless it's something time sensitive uh, for a Monday morning, you got you got to contact. I, I need to see your answer. Like it's something, if it's something like you know, at some point. But no weekends, yes. And, I, and if you have and if you have all the office replies or have like, then I appreciate that actually. That lets me know what's going on. Because I agree with you. Some again, I'm noticing some folks they work late at night. At nighttime, they answer all their emails, do right. anything. So I get to already do it first thing in the morning. I get it. I just, I just say for me during the week, I feel like within a couple of days, you should be able to get. That's just me. You should be able to get back to me if it's if it's a, if it's a time sensitive. Thing. If I'm just saying hi to you and what's you know just gonna get back to you at some point, I'm like yeah, I've got time. Um, but a lot of times, I'm actually I only email people if I really need something. A lot of times, anyway, I'm not one of those emails like hey, what's going on? How do you that kind yeah. of thing. Some, some folks do that too. They're just like, hi, how you doing? I'm like, well, just call me. You know, I'm talking about them. Um, but I'm, I'm Mr. Like, if I'm emailing you, it's for a reason. But yeah, no, if, if it's, you know, weekends, I always give leeway on weekends. It's not, some folks work on weekends, some don't. And so I, and I, and I have no problem. And if you tell me in advance, I don't do anything after six, or if I don't, I know, I'm not most people still does, still holds you to a certain thing. I think that's, that's rude also. If someone tells you their schedule, then if it's not an emergency and somebody's fingers are falling off, then I don't need to hear you. Then, then we don't need to do anything. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'll amend my statement. I, I you know, I, I said the weekends are different. That's all the thing, but I just think it's during, my thing's during the week. Well, sometimes we want to reply weekend just to get a head start on Monday. And I'm learning now, no, I'm not, I can't do that because people have learned to expect me to reply on Sunday. So I just said, well, I guess it'll just wait till Monday for me to do a reply because they do expect it. And so. Yeah. Um, no, Dennis, there's a, there's a good piece of information I heard from one of um, 
um, one of our vendors years ago, um, to get a jump start on his Monday morning, he would pin his emails and then just set them to, to send the next morning at like eight or eight 30 so that people are not being trained that he's answering email on Sunday, you know, so there's no expectation, but just to get his workflow through, he would respond, pin them all and just set them to deliver. So you can do that if you wanted to as well. Um, I find in our business, I think it's funny that people, um, think that I'm literally standing by the phone waiting for their call because they have the most important, right? They have the most important question or need that arises during, you know, the day. And we try and be as accommodating as we can. And we do have to prioritize. Really, we do in this business. Like if somebody's having a loss and they're having an issue getting a hold of an adjuster, we take that very seriously as opposed opposed to somebody who wants a quote for something that's renewing in 40 days. But that quote is the most important thing to them. So they want it now. So it's like how, you know, we're, we're constantly, Dennis, trying to manage expectations. And I think that um, with your situation, especially with tenants, not maybe not so much your, your clients, your landlords, but with tenants, I mean, you know, their, what's happening in their world is the most critical thing in their life. And that's a hard, that's a much harder conversation to try and deal with somebody. Cause it's going to be like, well, what do you mean this gar- you know, my garbage disposal is not working. That's super important to me. What do you mean? You can't, you know, get to it now. Right. right. So I, I, I actually, in, I don't envy you in that moment. Because that's and tough. it does, a, and, and according to them, it affects the baby, right? <laughs> the poor baby, the baby, <laughs> the baby. Is the baby's foot in the garbage disposal Maybe and it, it won't stop? Like, Maybe that's it will. different. Maybe it is. Good. Well, man, but you know, Dennis, I'll tell you something in my business. I mean, I'm you know, I, I have a split, I have two businesses. I'm in the organizing life coaching world, but then I'm also in entertainment. The organizing life, that's, that's really easy. They're, they're all very, see, they're all very organized. Everything's all perfect. And everything. That world, I don't worry about them, folks. But the entertainment, I deal with actors and actresses oh. and producers, creatives, so we say. Creatives. So their world, you can't even get it. It's, it's like herding cats sometimes. I'm just like, like, I thought I responded like a couple of days. I don't know what's going on, and you know, and I, you know, and I'm, and I was on tour yesterday, and I just I went to the store, and you know, I mean, I get all kinds of. That's what I'm saying. For me, it's always I'm like, I sent you an email, and you know, by tomorrow, or they will call me, I'm like for an interview that's three weeks from now. But the PR person's like, you have a problem. Okay, what, what's the problem? They can't wear their red shirt. Like, then wear a pink one. I don't really give a shit. Just like whatever. Like, <laughs> look together. Like, it's, it's three weeks from now. We'll be okay. It'll be okay, everybody. It'll be okay. But again, almost like the tenants, it's like their image, their look. Can you do that? Or they think of something all of a sudden, they want to throw it at me and I need to answer right now. It's like, we have like time. It's going to be okay. We're fine. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I know what you mean. So sometimes I do get that phone call at 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday and I'll look at the phone and I'll, I'll make a decision. If I'm going to, and I do make a decision. It's a, you know, person, I'm like, well, the interview is, on, well, I have interviews on, I work on Sunday. So if the interview's on Sunday, I'll pick it up. But it was not until like, you know, like usually a message and I'll get back to you when I, when I seriously can, you know, that kind of thing. But it's, you're right. I think it is also industry by industry and the people who are in the industry. Like I said, my organizers, they're super organized. They're all ready. Everything's, I have to worry about them. But it's these creative types. Those are the ones I got to like. And I love you guys. You guys watching this, listening. I love you guys. Just saying, it's that you guys are, all over, it's all over the place when it comes to email check yeah. so kind of crazy you know but email is a form for people also to want to pass on liabilities since they want to pass on liabilities you know back to they they send you an email and they want to make you oh i've notified you now here's your liability and it's like no that's not a liability you know i'm just gonna have to work through that problem on your own. I mean, home, especially when it comes to maintenance around a, a home or an apartment. I mean, <clears throat> I don't say it, but I'm thinking, you know, Home Depot is not just made for homeowners. It's also, you know, you can go there too, <laughs> you know, and, and get a little Phillips screwdriver. We're not fixing the doorknob every time it comes loose. Go in there and get that Phillips out there. And so there are oftentimes I send people Zoom links, uh, not Zoom links, uh, YouTube links how to fit, uh, reset your garbage disposal, 
how to reset a GFI outlet. Because they'll say, oh, my outlet's not working. You know, I send them a YouTube video on how to reset that, you know, or find where the, the problem could be before we send out a handyman. Because they, they, you know, part of the job, you know, part of a resident's responsibility is to manage your own home. We don't want to be in their home every all the time. You know, I mean, and also for them, you would think they wouldn't want they wouldn't want to sit around having to wait for somebody to come by and right. that whole thing. It's like, it's like, well, just I'll be, I'll be like, you just tell me how to do it. How do I talk me through it? Like, do how do I how do I you know? And I'll just I'll try it myself. If it's a big job, that well, I'm a homeowner, so I don't have that issue. But if it was a big job, then I would figure it out. I'll call somebody. But if it's something smaller, I can finish in five minutes. I'd rather do that than call than bug you and go. Okay, I'll wait from between two and five on Tuesday. I mean, I don't want to do all that. I mean, just. Can I fix it now? I mean, yeah, try to figure because I mean, nobody wants someone else in their own home. No, you, know? you, you kind of want your own space, your privacy. So, so now you've been, so you've been, so you, you live in Santa Monica, been in Coast City, so you've seen that whole the West Side, like I have changed. Um, do you think it's changing for the better? No, I mean, Santa Monica is no longer a small town, it's, no, not anymore. It's a, it's a little city now. Uh, um, you know, that it's hard, you know, we need more housing. Uh, I mean, every city needs more housing. Um, if you don't accommodate the population growth, I mean, the prices become, they get uh, too expensive for the average person. And um, Santa Monica has probably really experienced that in the last few years. I mean, uh, or last several years. So I think the additional um, building, I, I understand why there's subsidized housing. We need school teachers. We need, you know, people oftentimes the mistake they make is that they think, oh, subsidized housing or low income housing. Well, I think Santa Monica low income is 90, 85,000 or 90,000. Right. Well. I think that's what I read somewhere. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, gosh, that's low income. And people want to affiliate low income with, um, I don't know, uh, someone that you don't want living in your city, a homeless person right. or something. And right. that's not what it's really about. It's really to get the school teachers in there and the police officers, fire department, people to live closer to where they work, yeah. not necessarily. And, and homeless people do need housing. And, yeah. Um, and mixing those groups together in apartment buildings and in communities, I think is a good thing. Um, uh, so I, I'm not opposed to the growth. I just don't like that California is growing exponentially uh, uh, to the point that it's no longer a beach community. And even where you guys live, you know, all the development going on where you live. Uh, yes, Inglewood is, is crazy right now. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, outrageous. And, uh, but my thing is parking. Yeah. I, I mean, we're building all these places, but then not enough parking. And so everybody has five cars to a house in my neighborhood, especially. Everyone, families are living together again. It's starting to get where the son comes back home, brings his wife and kids. They each have a car. The parents each have a car. Yeah. And so, and so the driveway is already full. So they're parking on the street too. And so then I, we don't have a driveway in our house. We're the only house in the block has no driveway. And Ingo won't let us buy it, won't let us do one. That's all the story. Um, but we're trying to find parking in front of our own house. And everybody else has parked driveways and they don't care. They're parking wherever they feel like parking. And so it's like, so it is five per house, six per house cars. I just, just keep building compartment buildings. I'm like, is there an underground thing? For, I'm always looking to see if it's an underground thing or is it something for, I'm like, I want my, because Santa Monica, you can't park in Santa Monica. No, not at all. Um, you, pay, you pay to park in Santa Monica if right. you can find a parking spot. Right. Yeah, right. that's true. But they also um, want to, the, the city plan is to remove us from our cars. You know, they don't want people driving downtown Santa Monica or they're, over time, they're going to curb that. Some of the streets, um, you'll be required to take public transfer, transportation. And like where Jen, James lives, um, what is it? The new arena there. The, yep, uh, SoFi Stadium. $100, yeah. $125 to park to go see an event? Yes, 
I know. They, they don't want you to park. They want you to take the train, then on a, a bus into the stadium. Yeah. And Santa Monica is trying to mimic that. You know, they, they are. Okay. They, they, there was one point before the pandemic, they were going to turn Fourth Street into a, like another Third Street promenade or close oh, wow. street. I, I haven't heard talk about that since before the pandemic. So I don't know. I mean, Third Street Promenade is really suffering right now because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, a lot of closures. Yeah. Um, it's not even, uh, it, people uh, do take the train in to go yeah. to the promenade to the beach. The trains are pretty full on the weekends, especially. So yeah. Yeah. Um, it's helpful, but I don't, our infrastructure isn't really geared to public transportation even even though we're trying to get there, we built first, then did the yes. work on that infrastructure. It should have yes. been maybe build this part first, then this. But I, I think government agencies have a really hard time you yeah. know, predicting growth. I mean, well, you, you, know this, you know this, I come from, you know, cities like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, yeah. where I lived. Yeah. Where it was just wonderful. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a car. I got rid of my car in San Francisco. I had a little Ford Escort. I got rid of that thing. I didn't ever need it. I had BART. I had Muni. I had the cable car. I had everything in San Francisco. I didn't need it for 16 years. Um, we wanted to get, a, we wanted to drive somewhere. We'd rent a car and go outside the city if we wanted to, but none of us had cars. Nobody, none of my friends had a car in San Francisco when I was there. If you just think, cause it was just, like you said, it was set up. You get around the whole Bay area. You, right. didn't, you didn't need it. LA, when I get back to LA, I'm like, Half the city has it, the other half the city doesn't have anything. My brother works in Carson. He's like, Jane, yeah. he's got his car fixed. He goes, there's no public transportation to get me to Carson. That's like, that's like good. It'd be like five buses and two this. And like, no, it's like, there's no like, the train when it goes down is to Redondo Beach and that's it. And that the green line, that's it for now. I mean, that's it. And it's like, so it's like this weird, you're right. It's this weird, they built everywhere. But they said, oops, we forgot something. No, now let's get the uh, you know all these cars. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, I just think it's. Uh, I mean, LA is so spread out. It's so spread out. It is. It's a big city. I mean, actually, I think the smartest thing I've seen with public transportation is actually in the valley. It's the Orange Line, I think. Yes, it's yes. the Orange Line, mm -hmm. and it's a bus that has its own road all the yep. way. Yeah, I love the it. Valley. I ride it all the time. I have. I have yeah. a out there. That's beautiful. I mean, why? I, I, I know that we need trains, but at, I, I don't know, is it a billion dollars or something like that to build some of these, whatever, hundreds yeah, right. of millions? Yeah. Why not just make a dedicated bus line through some of these areas instead of, a, 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 you know, spend so much on trains immediately, maybe put the train in later, but right now just get the problem solved. Um, you know, I, I thought it's like, I have a client uh, who's off of Laurel Canyon stop. I used to go, I go on Chandler. I go over there all the time and do stuff with them. Yeah. And all the way, I went all the way out to, to one of the malls. It goes, to, it goes to one of the malls out there, uh, Warner Center. It says. And I've done that. And it's like, yeah. it's, just, it's easy to bring. It connects to the, the red line for me. It connects and I go back into the city. I used to, I used to work out there when I was in the entertainment out there. So I know that whole, it was great. It's like, it's just, it's fast. And, yeah. and it's the big buses and these big, long buses that are cleaner and nicer and um so yeah i wonder why we don't have more of that we need more of that i mean it's just yeah and and, and we spent all that money on that sepulveda corridor yes. uh, to widen the freeway through the sepulveda pass and it really didn't solve any problems and now there i think there's a proposal to build either the train along the freeway or underneath you know in through the mountain i don't remember what they're planning but there is that proposal it's like Maybe they should have started with that first. I mean, I don't feel the expansion, the width of the freeway was so, it was, it didn't really solve anything. I'm still sitting in that traffic when I have to go to the valley or back. It didn't really solve anything. It didn't. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, folks, like my friends <laughs> in the valley, I'm like, we, I live, I live, you know, over here. And I'm like, tell you guys, like some parts of the day, it's like, I, I would rather drag my teeth on the floor than get in the car to go to the valley. <laughs> I mean, at certain times of the day. I mean, yeah. seriously, it's and and the traffic, and that's that is such an LA <laughs> thing we're talking about right now. So you folks are not in LA, or whatever. But this is a really LA thing. But there's, there's no now. There's no rhyme or reason anymore. I have gone on at a noon on Saturday, and you're just like, why is there so many cars? You know, ten o'clock on a on a Wednesday. 
They're like, why there's so many cars? Like, it's just, it's like, it doesn't matter what time. Like, there's just traffic all the time. Just, like, that's just how it is. Um, yeah. Like, COVID hit the first time. It was great. Uh, you really could get places in 20 minutes in LA. You know, you know, that old saying, I've been here in 20 minutes. Well, seriously, back then in 2020, the only good thing that happened, we could get to somewhere in 20 minutes. The four or five was amazing. I'm like, what? <laughs> There's nobody out there. Um, it was great. And then get back to normal again. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's bad. I mean, the 105 going east after two o'clock, oh, forget it. The 10 after three o'clock, forget it. I mean, there's a certain few, it's just like, you literally are, you're literally stuck. You said sitting in charge, just stuck trying to get across town. Uh, it's, almost, it's almost easier to go by streets, you know, at some point. And who wants, wants to do that? Zigzag. Well, the homeowners don't want you there, that's for sure. They sure you don't. Know, when Waze came out, Oh. homeowner communities were up in arms Woo! about how the, all the traffic being diverted through their oh. through their neighborhoods it's yeah or their alleys or their alleys or their alleys <laughs> yes <laughs> no see, the thing is with waves it kills me i'll get i'll get in the uber or lift or whatever i'm going to zigzag from hollywood to inglewood okay um through hancock park and all those nice neighborhoods i'm like these houses are probably thinking, look at all these godforsaken cars going up and down our street that was probably previously quiet. And what gets me, this is my little rant for a moment, this is what gets me. Why are you going to send me down the street with no light and, go, and the lights the next street over, but on this street, and it's Wilshire Boulevard at five in the afternoon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. You know, I mean, you really cannot trust that these mapping systems have your best interests. In they don't. They don't. It's crazy. You might say five minutes diverting, but you're stuck trying to make a left-hand turn for 25 minutes. Thank yeah. You. That's what it is. And I go, but the lights on that street, why do you have to go? And it was not crowded. Why do you, I mean, I, I'm like, is this some kind of conspiracy? Like you really want yeah. me to have road rage? Like what's going yeah. on here? I'm like, try and seriously, try and turn left on Wilshire around five to six like that. It's impossible. Right. It's impossible. Trying to cross... San Vicente and like where I'm like you guys are crazy, you guys are crazy, 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 crazy. I'm with you, James. Thank you. Crazy. <laughs> that was going on there. La Cienega, La Cienega after four o'clock in the afternoon. Give me a break. Oh, yeah. La Brea. Yeah, you, same, oh. you know Dennis. You know those streets. You learn. You learn to avoid all the. I mean, the the best street in LA is Olympic. Yeah. It is. Oh, it is. It's a great street to be on to get across town. It's yeah. Olympic Boulevard. That's true. Olympic. I like Olympic. I'm not like Olympic. Okay, I like Olympic. <laughs> it's an easy ride. And and then uh, maybe north on Crescent Heights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That one. Depending on the time of day, though. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's not like La Cienega seems 24 7. Oh, that's a bad street, La Cienega. But Olympic and Chris, those are my two main streets to just try to get across town. Yes. And when I'm, in, when I'm, up, when I'm up north, when I say up north, Hollywood area, I like my fountain. <laughs> I, I, that's why I, I, go, I, go, I go down fountain a lot. It's a nice one there too sometimes. You can avoid some stuff because sunset in Santa Monica, you know, that's just that you're just done um, at certain times of the day too. So it's, it's, ugh. It's crazy, but I know, but yeah, those, all those homeowners, they're probably thinking, I'm, I have these million dollar homes and I got people up and down my street all day long. Just, I mean, it, it must suck. It's really must suck. It must suck. Like, especially in Hancock Park. I know that. I know that. It must really suck to do that. You know, so, how funny. Uh, so well, Melissa, I was, um, I was, I wanted to ask Melissa a quick question. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, it's insurance related. I thought James was in, in insurance as well, but I want, real quick, I learned a term, uh, well, I knew what an actuary was, but this woman practiced um, based on testing and the policy terms, predicting how long people lived. And I thought, oh, a palm reader. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is science behind it. They are a different kind of actuary. It's true. Those folks ex that those folks do exist in the life insurance, disability insurance space. But here's what even more interesting, I think. You know, when the airplane crashes, mm. there are folks who spend their entire career deciding how much each life is worth, and they claim to have like an algorithm for that. So mm -hmm. It's it's kind of crazy, but there are there are you know there's truth in math, and that's how they spend their life is valuing people's lives 
or valuing the terms of life. Yeah, that happens in our business. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, just Dude, I, I mean, I have always said in the insurance industry, I don't care who you are, you can find a place here. You don't have to look hard. There are so many different paths you can take in the insurance industry. It's, it's really... Um, it's, it's, it's really a great industry if, you, if you're looking for a professional career. You know, it doesn't really matter what you do, math, science, sales. It's all here. Accounting, it's all here. Hmm. That's my plug for the insurance industry for the day. Well, you know, well, you know I'm, with, I'm with Melissa because I said I was in it for 11 years and I did um, insurance education and I also did, um, I planned event planning. I was a manager director. Yeah association so i did event planning so like literally this, there's something for everybody in insurance and now i'm doing podcast producing for them mm -hmm. uh so i actually merged my old world my new world after i got off of here i'm doing a, i'm doing a show about um carbon markets and recon farms and i and i can talk about it because i used to do it for a living so i can talk about it but it, but it's actually i'm producing a podcast on it so there's something for it's, it's a whole area it's all kind of stuff it's a vast wide broad industry i agree, I agree. with there's, there's, you can find something there you can do. Hmm. You know. So if you ever get tired of property management, Dennis, <laughs> come here. Just Go on over. Go on over. <laughs> I didn't know it was a recruiting show. Oh, you didn't? Sorry. <laughs> Or Dennis, if you're like went to the entertainment industry, come on over. That's true. Yes. <laughs> I know folks at Sony. Get their know folks at there. Sony. <laughs> Sony, like work out. I work with, I work with the folks at CBS and NBC. I can, I can help you out there. No, that's funny. That's so funny. I'm like, well, we're, we're all doing. We're all doing what we love anyway. I think you're doing what you do like it though, right, Dennis? Like, overall, you, you like what you do. Right. I do. I, I just, um, I try to, my job, I, I want to, um, you know, in our business, we want to please everyone. You just can't, you can't yeah. please everyone. And yeah. when you can't please everyone, you feel that you take it a little, I take it a little personal and I, I need to step back from that. You know, it's more or less, I, I just have to do the best job I can with what I have with, with, with the tools that I have. Right. All of yeah. us can we do the best as long as you, enjoy what you do and you um, do, do the best you can put all your effort into it mm -hmm. that's all you can that's all that's wanted from you anyway or from yourself you know but that's if you're not very happy, well said you know, if you're not if you're not happy with what you're doing then get out do something become else. a professional golfer <laughs> <laughs> it'd be nice but i just wouldn't get paid <laughs> And that, and that's where we'll end the show. I like, I like, I like that advice. Actually, it's it's a great advice for any industry. We're all through different industries. Any industry, anything in your life, you know, you have choices, folks. You all, we always have choices. It's hard to make them sometimes. But we always have choices, and that's 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 the bottom line, right? Uh, doing. We're all sitting here. All three of us are still smiling, so we're still we're doing okay, folks. Uh, well, I'm James, and I'm Melissa. And we want to thank Dennis Parasal for being on our show. Thank you, Dennis, to come back another time and, and chat with us. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, very interesting conversation. I, I love it. We thought we talked about emails. And I, I love all this. Stuff. I love that. And property and everything. I like that. Uh, our show is on Mondays. That's what we do here on JLJ Media, my network. Uh, we're a video on YouTube, or you can actually go to any audio streaming service. It's iHeartRadio, Apple, Google, Spotify, and all those. Look up Coffee Conversation with James and Melissa, and you'll find us. Go we'll hit the follow button, subscribe, share, care, all that stuff. We have great conversations, as you saw, like this one today. Um, so continue to listen to us, watch us. Thank you so much for your support. Have some coffee or tea, whatever, and join us. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.